My name is Davin Sturgeon, and in this AIM Learn Fast video, we will learn how to manage the configurations when downloading from your Micron 5. So I raise competition cards, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So, Roger, there are a ton of people that are moving from the Micron 4 to the Micron 5. Um, do you have any tips about when they first start downloading their data? Yeah, the, the, the download process is, is substantially different, right? We're going from, the, from the, the data key on the Micron 4s, where you download it onto that small piece of hardware and then plug into your computer, to the Micron 5, where we, we, we connect via a Wi-Fi connection and, and, uh, and download directly into the software. And it's different software. We, we use Ray Studio 3 for the download now. So, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a bit different. So let, let's talk about just some of the basics. Uh, and and, uh, and we'll, first, we'll set up the computer, show you the different, some different ways to set it up. And then, then we'll download a, a file directly and, and, uh, and give you an idea of how that works. It's pretty, pretty straightforward on that side, too. So the first thing is we're in Ray Studio 3. And um, and you can do this at um, you know even without your Micron 5 to start with and and uh, some people like the we can either download everything into the root directory and 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 Ray Studio will handle that okay or some people like to build subfolders for different tracks and different drivers and different carts and and, and any different number of ways right and, and and put all that data into these folders and. In the Ray Studio 3 software, we've uh, built a process that makes that very, very easy and automated. So, and you can do that before you ever uh, leave home. So, it, to get to that setting up of the the data download process, the a couple different ways to do it. But the easiest one without a Micron hooked up to it is uh, this upper left preferences button up in the upper left hand corner. If you click on that guy, you end up with some some different menus. The one we're going to look at this time is this data download. So I'm just going to push this button, and a uh, and a dialog box comes up. And we've got like every you know most of our dialog boxes. We've got lots of tabs, and and you know there's quite a bit of information under this one little area. So let's start in, on the on the first tab, which is the download data tab. The way this works is you you end up with a root folder for download, and that is set when you download your software and you and you've told it where to be. Most everybody is going to have theirs in, on their C drive, the main drive. Mine happens to be on an E drive on this uh, on this desktop. But uh, but the but the default location is AIM under bar Sport, Ray Studio 3, the user, and then data, and that's the folder structure that that it's going to start with. And then we can with this this next piece down here below, add subfolders underneath that data folder, and uh, the way I kind of like to do it, and you you have uh, you have these seven or eight different options here, and and you can stack them and put them in any order you want to, is I I turn on I check the box that says track, so once you download your data, you're going to be able to tell it what track you were at, right, and uh, and when you when you plug that number that day that track in. As the download happens, it realizes it shows that uh, okay, your computer does not have a, a track that uh, you know is racetrack number one, does not have that as a as a as a folder in your data, and it'll create a folder here after the data or inside that data folder called tr racetrack one, and we can then have more folders. We can have it all of our subfolders by by the racer as well. We can build multiple folders on top of each other. And if we want the racer to be in front of the track, all you simply do is once you check it, you come over here to these little up and down arrows and you can put the racer to the top of the list. So it builds the first folder as racer and then a number of tracks underneath each racer. So we can do it in any different way that you want to. I kind of just like to have the the track being the subfolder. So all my data from track number one ends up in one folder and then we have the ability on the next tab over, on the file name tab, then we can come in, and this is how we actually name the file, uh, the, the group of files, which we're going to look at uh, a little bit later. But um, so here we've got, I've got the date and time selected as the first part of the file. It shows you an example of what the file name is going to look like. So I've got the date and time, under bar, and then the racer, because I've got those two checked. If I wanted to have the racer's name first, I simply come in and I click the up arrow on the racer, 
and now it's going to be racer underbar the date and the time dot the extension of the different uh, you know the different files that are part of the downloads so uh, I, I kind of like to have the, the the date and the time first because then it's easier for me to sort the data in you know in, in some of the different windows explorers you know you can just click on it and you can you know, um, sort the files a little bit easier and i like them to be in order of the date that they were ran so uh, i'm going to use racer uh, time and date and then racer as part of my file naming so so basically on this tab, we have set, and we can change user definable. Um, we have set where we want our data to kind of be, to start to be stored. And then we have also then went ahead and structured the, the automated file naming structure. And uh, so if you do that ahead of before you ever leave, these things will be done for you when you get to the track and it's just automated at that point. You also have this last option down here below, copy downloaded data to another folder. So we're gonna put it here, but if you have a, you know, another spot on your hard drive, you want to save it so you can easily, you know, maybe it's on the desktop so you can give it to your buddy real quickly and, and throw it onto a, a thumb drive or something. You can actually do that as well and identify where you want that. The next one is download movies. Uh, we're not going to talk about movies here today. We're going to talk about the data side, but movies from the Smarty Cam, you can actually have that automated as well. This one here is kind of interesting. You you have venue types. It, most of you might think of it as a, a, a type of the race, right? The type of an event that it was. We have generic testing, qualifying testing, warm-ups, races, heat races. There's a whole bunch of these here. And, uh, and then we can filter out what you don't want to see during the download process. I've got them checked here as just being, I want to see generic testing, qualifying, warm-up race, pre-final and final. And I've, those are the only ones going to be presented to me when I download because they're the only ones with the check boxes here on the side. And let's say... We do want uh, Superpole to be included as well, but Superpole, yeah, um, that doesn't make sense to me, right? That, that name, I'd like to change it. So once you check it and you hover over it, you see there's this click to customize. You can click on that, and we can call that final qualifying, right? Or, or, or whatever, something that means something to you. You can change these names a little bit for yourself if you want. And then, uh, so now that, that Superpole is actually called, is going to be called final qualifying in your in your data box it is show, shown to you so if if you really only want three or four of these certainly just check those you certainly don't want them all checked because it uh it just makes it a lot more uh, choices when you do the download itself and then the advanced tab this is uh we can when we download we can have it auto select downloadable files if they have not when you connect your your micron 5 and it has not been downloaded to that computer before it will automatically select those files and it just makes it easier for you to grab. That's typically the way that most people like to do it. If, um, and if there's only a single lap session of data, so you, you started it up on your cart stand before you went out there and you shut it off and you didn't actually make a lap, we can actually skip those, not auto select those by checking this box. So that gets rid of all those warm ups and, and um, you know, cool offs and, and, and some of the different things. Do not merge files. We have the option of not merging. If you had four files that you had not downloaded as the day went on, and we can put all those, we can merge those into one big download file by merge files log the same day. We can merge all files on your on the download into one big download, or we can not merge them at all. And most people do not like to merge them. They want to keep that qualifying and that heat race. If you did not download, keep those separated, uh, separated into to separate downloads. And then the, the last thing here that we'll talk about is additional export formats. This is, a, this is a different concept of ways we've done it in the past. We've always had exports in Ray Studio 2 that you can export data, and you still can. But here we have the ability for these four different file types of actually creating that. In this case, I've got Google KML selected. We During the download process, it it, it goes through that data, creates that KML file, and creates a KML file and puts it in the, right in your, in your folder that you've created uh, before you even get to Ray Studio 2. So in the Google KML file, if you haven't used it before, that's where you can um, open it up in Google Earth and, and, the, and zoom in with all your driven lines right on top of a, 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 an aerial imagery of the, of the track that you're on. So that's kind of a, an interesting way, another just an interesting set of things we can download into. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and click on OK because now we've set it all up. We know where we're going to download it. We've got our, our folders all set up where we want to in our automated file naming. So I'm going to click on OK. And then we want to download it, right? So I've got my Micron 5 hooked up here. I need to go ahead and connect with Wi-Fi to it. 
So we're connecting to the Micron 5 now. And downloading is, is pretty darn straightforward. I come up to the, to the Devices button. You'll see it here. Just click on that. And it's connecting. And it goes to uh, the last tab you had open. In this case, I had uh, been to the downloaded tab before. It shows all the different tests that are on your, in this case, Micron 5, that are sitting here ready to, to, to take a look at and download. It really is as simple as coming in here and clicking on the, the file you want to download. In this case, I only have one. And uh, you notice when I clicked it, the download went from grayed out to being uh, accessible to us. And then I'm just going to hit the download button. You, it brings up, remember those properties we were looking at, especially the venue type. That's the one we looked at in depth. But you plug in what the race driver name is, the, your, the name of your cart, the championship 2016, you know, karting championship, wherever you happen to be racing, what track you're at. I just have aim track in here. And then the venue type. Remember, we turned off all of those different things. Well, we the, here's what's left of the list. It's a whole lot easier without that big, long list. So there's Super Pole that we talked about. We call it Friday qualifying. So I'm going to say it's the race. And and we can just, uh, you know, we can plug in, you know, the information. This was a test, you know, you know, uh, eight PSI on the tire pressures, what, whatever it is that you want to add in as comments and then click on OK. The download comes across, it sweeps across, it downloaded. Once you download your data, it is actually auto hidden, right? Once it's you, you, that's changeable, if you don't like it, you can unhide the downloaded. You can just uh, do that and come back in, and, and now it says already downloaded if you unhide them. But you can hide the downloaded. That's the default. And uh, that file has now been downloaded. And when you open it up, uh, when you go to Race Studio 2, open it up. And let me bring that up here real quickly. We'll open up Race Studio 2. I've got it set where it automatically downloads that to, or automatically shows that test, but I'm going to close the test. And you can see if I use the selection criteria. You can see that that last test that I just downloaded just a second ago was test at 8 PSI, all the uh, different drivers and all the different things. You know, there there is that data. We can open that up and, and take a look at it. It's really that simple to download and um, to set up the downloading on your Micron 5. So it's much easier, uh, much more automated process for you, and uh, as as well as then download the, the Micron 5 itself. Pretty straightforward. So that's the end of this Aim Learn Fast video. We've been taking comments from throughout social media and trying to come up with new topics that are most useful. So feel free to leave a comment below or get a hold of us on Facebook or on Twitter and just let us know any questions you have or any things that you like about these videos. We try to put up new videos every Tuesday, so just stay tuned to our channel and come back for more videos.